had a good friend who went after Cordova. The investigative journalist Scott McGrath. He wanted to see once and for all what actually went on behind that curtain. What did you find out? I, th I think we're done here. Please welcome Mauricio Pestel. Thank you. Welcome so to nice show. to meet you. How are you? Thank you. Congratulations on your film, because that's what it feels like when you read it. Oh, thank you. It feels like a film. It does. Is it written as such? It was not. It no. was written as a novel. Yes, yes, obviously. But obviously with the filmic influences. I wanted it to have a sort of um, filmic quality. But right. no, first and foremost, it's a novel. So it's an interesting idea, though, that uh, of our generation, I'm, I'm older than you, but this, where cinema is literature, like, it's almost impossible for our brains to separate the two because we've seen so many adaptations one way or another that we're always just going to... It's a new language that we speak, that there's almost no difference. Yes, I mean, I think that first and foremost, I am a novelist. I love the format of a novel because you can go wide, you can go deep. You don't have to worry about paying extra scale. You can have a cast of millions and like, and everyone's working for free. So um, in, <laughs> in that context, being a director of a novel is right. fantastic. Um, it was very much the exploration of fear, this book. Um, fear of just writing a second novel because that in, unto itself is terrifying, but also so finding out what it means to be scared in this day and age. Is well, it possible? And separating fear from horror. Yes. Which horror has become the thing that people go to to be scared in film, exactly. but it's not the same thing as proper fear, right? Exactly. Well, there's terror and then there's horror. And I love terror because terror is fear over what we don't see but feel like we're about to see, while horror is revulsion plus fear over what we have just seen, right. which is cataclysmic. You've been very clever about how you hide stuff and things you've done in the past. Look at this little moment from you. Why do we even need stories? When asked in a 1986 Life interview to explain his film's wide popularity, the American film director Stanislas Cordova replied, I don't know. I just let the audience quietly spy on themselves. So there's you talking, <laughs> except you're quoting an interview with this character, this mm -hmm. person that's not a real person, he's mm -hmm. your character. I know. But years before we knew this was your person. I know, and I never thought I would be found out on this little thing. Well, that was two things. One thing is I was in the creation stage of building this character, and I like to talk about characters as if they're alive and make them very real to myself. So that was partly for myself. And then the second thing was, when you go to these universities and give lectures, you wonder if anyone's actually listening in the audience. <laughs> so I was dying for someone to come up and say, what on earth were you talking about? Who is Cordova? Yeah. What, you know, how can I get a copy of his films? Of course, no one did. I think, um, I, they might have fallen asleep because that lecture took place at like 7 a.m. Um, but... I think that, yeah, I just wanted someone to say, what on earth are you talking about? Well, don't you think you have to get a director to m pretend to be Stanislaus and make a Cordova film? Like, I was watching... I'm working on it. You are, yeah? <laughs> Stay tuned. We were watching Glorious Bastards, right? I and know. they were creating those propaganda films that Eli Roth I know, directed. I know, Watching this going, this guy's a, an interesting, sort of creepy dude. Mm -hmm. I don't know, and the dead daughter, and there's some weird going on with him. Right. He doesn't seem as committed as he needs to be. Why? So I want to see what kind of film he makes. So you're doing that. Well, stay tuned. Not exactly. I mean, I will never be Cordova, thank God. But um, I have had, well, in the course of writing the book, I came up with the plots of all of his films. Right. So I think in some way over the course of my career, they'll be realized in different ways. I haven't exactly figured out what format Some yet, is film, some is book, some is whatever. So. All right, let me ask your apology, okay? I'm going to throw some questions toward okay. you. The answers are all important, but a few of them will find out who you really are, okay? <laughs> night moves or night fever? Night Fever. Okay. Night Moves is pretty good, though. What's your favorite <laughs> story that your mother read to you? Hmm, I would say Great Expectations. Something that used to scare you but doesn't anymore? My, um, oh, my kindergarten teacher. <laughs> Mrs. Hall. <laughs> For a second, I thought Mrs. you were going to say my father, but then you went to my kindergarten teacher. No, no, no. Well, no, I was about to say my fifth grade teacher, but it was actually kindergarten. Really? That's kindergarten like, just to scare Mrs. you. Mrs. Hall, yeah. She was going through a divorce, and she was really mean to everybody. Oh, she... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. One thing you're still too scared to try. Oh, I guess heroin. <laughs> 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 
terrified of train, like the movie Train Spotting yeah. terrifies me. Terrifies me. But is it something And that part where the baby's like shriveled, yeah. I, it's horrifying, it's horrifying. Where, when people lose themselves and lose their humanity, that's what my te most terrifying moment is. But you said that, you answered that in the most charming way oh. as if you thought of it. You're like, you're like, well, I'd love to try heroin, but I'm just too scared. <laughs> well, I like to, you know, try different things. I'm not going, I mean, I will yeah, Don't experiment. try heroin, but you know I'm that. not going yeah. to, I'm not going to. But uh, the, yeah, I mean, I, I always like to know what my boundaries are and figure out if I can push them or I won't go there. Who do you owe a huge thank you to, and it can't be your mom? Um, it would be my grandmother, who passed away during the writing of Night Film at 101, um, and was an incredible listener and an incredible storyteller. Congratulations on the book. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. Thank you. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Night Film is the name of the book. We'll be right back. Thank you.